right, am I ready to go? Oh, wow, Dave and Doug, I see Julian, very nice. Linda, I feel like it's uh, the old romper room. I, I was just gonna say that. Room. And I see. <laughs> yeah, and I see. Okay, I'll give it, give it a few more minutes for anyone uh, who was trying to sign in here. <clears throat> Anyways, I want to welcome everyone. Everyone's online from the panel, which is excellent. And uh, true to the whole travel theme, uh, we're dialing in from uh, different places in the world, uh, which is uh, which is a marvel of technology today. Um, it seems that as we uh, as we move into retirement and we age, uh, we're more interested in travel than ever. So we thought we'd put this series together to give uh, you know our clients and uh, our friends uh, some uh, salient ideas about how to travel, um, why uh, and and when and where and also uh, some savings tips uh, to build to build that travel fund so that uh, it doesn't become a challenge at all. It's actually, you build it into your lifestyle. So uh, with that intro, and again, welcome everyone and our panel. I'd like to uh, bring in uh, Eric uh, and Pear to uh, uh, start the conference and uh, the conversation, and, uh, and then we'll follow up with Angel and, uh, and Diane. That sounds great. So hello to everybody and thanks for joining today. I hope this warms you up on uh, what starts to be a cold day for those of us in the GTA and across Canada. So nice to be thinking about and talking about travel to uh, get us in the, the warm and festive mood. So uh, our team here, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, we have a few new faces. So always nice to get a face to the name, but Leah, who's uh, our marketing guru, amongst other things, is on the call, so you get to see her live and in person. So uh, thank you, Leah, for putting all this together. So we're going to get started with our tips, and uh, very excited to have Diane today as our expert on travel, and she's going to be taking us through uh, some tips and some great tidbits of information uh, in terms of the travel side of things. And then we also have Angel, who's another uh, worldwide guru and uh, he's got some great tips and tricks uh, technology-wise that we can look to use. So I'm uh, very excited to have this trifecta for you today. Okay, so first tip, and I'll blow through these uh, relatively quickly because I want to leave enough time, one, for some discussion and to look at uh, the travel side of things. But number one, TFSA is a great way to start saving for vacations. I mean, for one, uh, tax-free growth, so interest, dividends, capital gains, all that is tax-free versus if you're saving in a savings account, for example, you're making a withdrawal. One, the interest uh, is taxable, so you'll get a slip at the end of the year. you got to pay taxes on that. And uh, two, TFSA, you can withdraw at any point during the year, and uh, there's no income tax ramifications. So great tool to build up uh, some cash on the side for your vacations. You just want to be mindful of the contribution limits uh, because like an RSP, you get charged a 1% penalty for the amounts uh, that you go over based on the month. So as long as you're within that limits, uh, keep that together. One more thing with regards to the TFSA. I've seen some instances where clients have multiple TFSAs. We generally recommend having one TFSA because then contribution limits uh, remain visible and you don't get into an over contribution scenario. Last thing you want is a letter from CRA saying you've over contributed and they tend to take their time with that, which means that they're accruing interest on it. So keep things simple. Uh, but if you want to designate a portion of your TFSA for travel, great. There are some wonderful options to do so. So that's it for tip number one. Uh, next tip. is uh, the RSP. So RSP you want to use in conjunction with your TFSA. And the, the main insight here is that you can use tax refunds. So it's, if, in, if you are in a high tax bracket, for example, you're making more than say 100,000 in a year and you have RSP room, a great option is to make an RSP contribution. And in April, when you get your tax refund, throw that into your TFSA. And that way you're taking care of your retirement and you're also building up some uh, good equity on the side and you're putting that in a tax-free 
account. So great way to do that. What you don't want to do is put money into your RSP and then withdraw it for vacations. RSP should be considered an emergency if, if last, if all other options have been exhausted. Uh, I would even recommend line of credit before then, uh, because what happens with an RSP withdrawal, one, you have to pay withholding tax, and two, essentially the amount that you withdraw gets added to your income, so it becomes a taxable amount. So if you can avoid withdrawing from an RSP other than making a first time home buyer's withdrawal, if that applies to you, or the lifelong learning plan, if you're going back to school. So that's how the RSP and TFSA work in conjunction with regards to travel. Next, Leo. Okay, so the third type, so we looked at TFSA, RSP. Uh, if your TFSA is topped up, then the next most efficient place to save for travel would be a savings account. And what that is basically like a bank account in which you can hold investments, uh, deposits, but what we'd recommend in this case is uh, there's tax efficient funds that are called corporate class and effectively they convert interest and, and some form of dividends into a more taxable uh, type of income such as capital gains. So you pay less taxes throughout the year and uh, those can have equities in them. They could have money market funds so such as bonds and, and deposits. So there are multiple options that we can do to make those holdings tax efficient. Uh, so that would be if your TFSA is topped up, then a great option uh, to look at where to save next if you want to keep building up that travel spend. Okay, and one more note on that. So this applies, uh, and this we've been sharing with a lot of our clients throughout this year. It's been a nice option. Uh, we'll, given where interest rates are, it's almost as if we're at close to peak uh, interest, we'll see. Uh, there's a Bank of Canada announcement today. They, they will likely hold, but we'll see what happens. In any event, what that means is that interest paying deposits, such as uh, the high interest savings fund, are paying out quite attractive yields. Uh, so right now we have one fund that we've we've used uh, that is offering an yield of about 5%. And that's compounded monthly, compounded daily paid monthly and uh, offers a much better rate than say a, a bank savings account which i've generally seen between the 0.5 to one percent maybe 1.5 uh, the nice thing about this is it's almost like a gic but there's no locked in period so you put the money in for two three days and you don't have to pay a penalty or forego all the interest so nice really low risk fund uh, great for travel if you've got anything coming up in six months this is a great option for you and uh, it does fluctuate with interest rates. So if they go up, the yield will go up. And if they go down, the yield will come down. But as of right now, great place to store some short term cash and uh, thus good vacation savings option. And next. Yeah. Perfect. With that, I'll mention one more. Uh, this one is Air Allo, and this will transition to Angel, who will talk about some other Tips, AirAllo is basically an eSIM that allows you to buy data so you can use uh, the data on your phone without having to swap out your SIM card. So it's a great option. It works around the world. Basically, you download the AirAllo app and you pay $3 US, I believe, for 10 gigs. Depends on the country, but that's generally what I've seen. And it allows you to use data. So if you want to use Maps, if you want to use Uber, you can use that on your phone without having to swap out your SIM card. So the caveat being you can't make phone calls with your number, but WhatsApp works, uh, FaceTime works, Facebook message, uh, all those apps work great. And you don't have to switch out your phone. So a great little option there. And uh, with that, I'll transition to Angel. Hi, Angel, and I'll pass the baton off to you. Thank you, Eric. That's great. Hello, everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar that uh, can make your retirement travel sweet and uh, enjoyable. Uh, the first uh, tip that I would like to provide, and Leah, please let's move to the next slide, is the app WISE. So WISE allows you to exchange currencies and make payments um, abroad at point of sales or online safely and saving a ton of money in terms of uh, exchange rate fees and transfer fees. So this is an app. And for those of you who are willing to uh, look at it, there is a link at the bottom of the page 
that says go to wise webpage, which uh, will give you more information. It is uh, very easy to use. So basically it works like this. Uh, you register and the first step of finishing the registration is that your identity has to be verified. So for that purpose, you will need a valid ID because uh, WISE is a fintech company that falls under the regulations for uh, money laundering. They are uh, required to ensure that all people who register are real people. So once you finish the registration, you can load your account with funds. And for example, you've just uh, withdrawn $5,000 from your RSP and you wanna go on a travel to Italy. What you can do, is you can transfer um, a certain amount, let's say a 500 Canadian to the app. And then within the app, you can easily convert the Canadian dollars into more than 40 currencies. For the purpose of this example, we have on screen, uh, once you have registered the, uh, your account, uh, it's a virtual bank. You don't have to go to a bank office um, the app allows you certain amount of withdrawals from ATMs around the world. And once you set up your account, you can request a physical card that will come. And while you're waiting for the physical card, you can have a digital one. That's why on the, this slide, you see two green wise cards because one is the physical card and one is the digital being created by the app while you're waiting. So once you transfer certain amount into Euro, you, when you go to a point of sale and depending whether you're using the card um, NCF uh, feature to tap, or if you're using one of these devices or your phone, as long as you have the foreign currency in your app already converted, it's a smart app. So it, registers what is the currency of the current transaction being if you're buying at a grocery store or you're paying uh, for souvenirs at a, a shop, it will pull the money from that wallet because the two squares with the Canadian flag and the European flag are wallets with funds in them. If you don't have the funds in your wallet, the app can be set either to withdraw and convert, or it will prompt you that you don't have the funds in this currency in your account. Uh, the app is very helpful for um, transferring money abroad because their transfer fees are much lower than your regular bank and also perfect for saving on foreign exchange fees. If you're shopping online, uh, let's say from the US, and you know that you'll be going to your um, house in Florida in a couple of weeks and you want to pick up your purchase on the way there, it will save the 2.5% uh, exchange fee from your regular credit card. Uh, and you will pay only the, mm, the US dollar uh, amount, which you see there. <laughs> As of today, I already have four wallets with four different currencies. And I love the app every bit. But another feature that is also helpful and uh, happened to me recently was that on a flight to Germany last year, uh, one of our suitcases was delayed. And it took about seven days for the suitcase to come. Uh, while waiting, uh, we were forced to make some um, shopping and uh, uh, compensate for the missing toiletries and other uh, clothing. So after the suitcase arrived, I've made a little list uh, with a total at the end that I've submitted to the airline for refund. And funny enough, the airline accepted my claim, but they requested me to provide your account. So if you're the regular Canadian traveling abroad just with your credit cards, most likely you don't have a, a bank account in Euro. But uh, with WISE, uh, you can have accounts to receive transfers in about probably, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a dozen currencies. 
so far I've been able to receive payments in US, in Euro, and in Bulgarian Leva or in this app from uh, other parties. And with that, uh, I would like to move to the next slide unless there are any questions in the meantime. No, no questions. I encourage you to type your questions and we will address those as much as we can. Let's move to the next slide, please. The next uh, tip that uh, I'm here to offer is using a phone app that will help you make free phone calls without using your roaming service and you don't even have to use your phone abroad. Fongo is a Canadian based company that provides both free and paid plans. I personally use their free plan because it provides everything I need for my purposes. Uh, since we left Canada for a long uh, winter um, period in uh, Southern Europe, we didn't want our carrier to charge us nor wanted to use their um, roaming plans. So we've suspended our Canadian phones, which are with Fido, and we are using Fongo um, exclusively. Uh, another tip that I would like to provide for those that are willing to try this is, remember, if you're traveling for extended period of time and you're planning on using Fongo, make sure that update your contact information with your bank or with your insurance company in case you need to receive verification messages from, from them. Receiving such messages is free with the free plan with Fongo and I've, um, I've included on this slide uh, screenshots of such messages and, and they're great uh, because you don't need to, again, you don't need to subscribe to a paid service in order to receive verification messages from your uh, bank or other uh, providers in Canada. However, trying to text friends with Fongo is only possible if you subscribe to their paid plans. But nowadays, everybody using Viber or WhatsApp or other platforms, I'm sure you, you can easily compensate for that with other means. And let's move to the next slide. Oh, we have a question. Let's look at the question. Okay, this is for the um, webinar host. So uh, Leah will address this. The next uh, tip. Hey, I hey have... Doug. Uh, yeah, so the uh, question was, will you be sending a copy of the presentation? Uh, yeah, the presentation is recorded and everybody that attended will get a copy and we'll also be posting it to our YouTube channel. So hopefully that helps. Thank you, Per. Air tags. Air tags are small, beautiful devices. Um, they're sold as singles or as packs of four from uh, any Apple store or some of the uh, licensed retailers like Best Buy. And they're great in nowadays with, when we have uh, travel that is so hectic uh, and so many bags are, get lost so often. So on the screenshot, uh, you see my hand and you see the size of the, um, the air tags. Each air tag has a little uh, battery in it, which is good for a year. And what I do when I travel is I've put a tag in every suitcase uh, or any piece of valuable luggage that travels with me. This way I can track it safely. Uh, during our trip across the Atlantic. And on the second screenshot, you can see that my suitcases are with me at Pearson Airport. And one of the tags that I've uh, put in my car is still in my garage back in Mississauga. When we arrived at uh, Toronto Airport, uh, the luggage systems were down. So we had to drop our bags not on the belts, but in front of the belts, and in trust and hope that uh, the system will come online soon enough to process our luggage and put it on the plane. And as you can see, 
uh, on the third screenshot, while we were waiting at the gate, the suitcase made it to the plane. So this is the, the beauty and the convenience of tracking your luggage uh, with Apple Tax. They don't require any subscription plans because of the technology employed is a Bluetooth technology. So once you put it in your luggage or um, in the pocket of your spouse, you always can see where they are and meet them. Being on a street or uh, any other place that has plenty of Wi-Fi networks available because uh, the air tags work, they emit a signal that registers with any um, Wi-Fi network available. And nowadays, our cities and our neighborhoods are covered and, and overlaid by thousands of networks. And for those of you who do not use Apple phones um, are, and are interested in this technology and this type of tool, I suggest you uh, look up Samsung Galaxy phones and Samsung Galaxy smart tags. And with this, I pass it to the young. Thanks, Angel. Those are those are super useful tips, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, just, I just, uh, I, I did want to add one thing before Diane gets on, and that's, you know, we have the ability if you are saving for travel in the U.S. to uh, invest in U.S. dollars uh, and build up a pool of money in U.S. dollars as well. So. Um, uh, you you can keep that in mind, and that way you don't have to worry about what the conversion rates are at the time. You can convert, and then have it invested in U.S. dollars, and uh, and let it grow in in that uh, in that fashion. Okay, Diane, I'm going to pass it to you. So, Alea, you can uh, you can uh, uh, run Diane's slides. Oh, I'm doing my own. Uh, Diane will be doing her own slides today. Maybe I should have let Leah do it. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I was introduced, uh, but my name's Diane McClelland, and I'm a travel advisor with the travel agent next door. Um, if you have your phones handy, you can take a scan of the QR code, and you'll have my contact details right on your phone. Otherwise, I believe it's going to be in, I guess, the handouts or or whatever, whatever we get after. Um, thank you very much, the Santi team, for inviting me to speak in your presentation today. And I'd also like to thank everybody for taking the time out of their day to join us. A little bit about myself. Um, I've been in the travel industry for over 25 years. I own and operate a small locally owned home-based travel agency business. Um, it's called the Travel Agent Next Door, and it's part of a large nationwide network of agents where we have over 1,200 agents affiliated with our organization now. I'm TECO certified. I'm certified. I'm certified. Sorry, I have a designation of certified travel associate with the Travel in Institute. And I'm also um, special needs group certified. So tra some travel trends over the past, over 2023 and into 2024. Um, travel is normalizing, um, especially with the flight delays and cancellations we saw earlier in the year, um, but the industry is still recovering. Um, there is serious shortages in all sectors of the travel um, of travel and most Airlines are still not up to full capacity that they were in 2019. 75% Canadians listed relaxation and disconnecting as the primary incentive for taking a leisure trip. There's a new term out now. It's called uh, digital detox. Just like that. I apologize. Um, it's when a person voluntarily refrains from using digital services such as smartphones, computers, and social media platforms. Um, so you're seeing a, a lot of people just want to disconnect from every, everything right now. Um, followed by that, adventure is high on the list of travel uh, travel plans, um, which is also most which is almost twice as important for Canadians than for global travelers. Forty one percent 
Canadians versus 25% of global travelers. One in five Canadians plan to take the same number, if not more trips in 2024. Canadians are eager to travel after COVID. Everybody just wants to get out and see the world again, but they're open to suggested suggestions. They're undecided and ready to be influenced about exploring new places to travel. There's high Google searches of where to travel. Um, key influences, influences are, um, are social media, film, and TV locations. Um, they seem to be big influencers for North Americans planning their travel. Programs such as Emily in Paris, Game of Thrones, Outlander, music concerts, and other destinations. Of those, Canadians planning to travel to the UK, 52% say they've been influenced by actor Ryan Reynolds and the ownership of the Wrexham AFC team. In 2024, 18% of Canadian travelers plan to upgrade their flights to business or first class, while 19% intend to purchase airport lounge access for a more enjoyable trip. I've actually seen that going back since people started traveling late in, uh, uh, what are we in, 2022. Um, if you want preferred seats or first class, book them early because they are getting sold out quickly. Um, and the other thing about the lounge access passes is people are wanting to start their vacation as soon as they get to the airport, actually probably as soon as they leave their house. So, you know, that luxury starts in um, enjoying some time in the airport lounge um, prior to boarding the flight. In 2024, 18% of Canadian travelers plan to up, oh, I already said that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Spending big and staying longer. Um, Canadians are spending, uh, they spent about 12% more in 2023 and uh, the anticipated annual spend in 2024 is a remarkable $20,000 per person, um, more towards international trips. Um, some, uh, some countries are advocating for less air travel. The trend in staying longer will allow people to travel less, but better. Um, I'm seeing a lot of groups and celebratory travel weddings, um, multi-generational family trips. I have a lot of grandparents taking their adult children and their children on holidays, bachelorette and bachelorette uh, trips, just groups of friends, um, birthdays, anniversaries, uh, corporate retreats are, you know, um, uh, up again, as well as um, groups like food and wine groups, sports groups, and health and wellness is up there as well. Um, uh, as I said earlier, expedition and adventure travel is um, is expanding a lot more uh, it's since, well, probably 2023 and into 2024. Um, bucket list milestone trips, vocational travel vacations, uh, working holidays, studying abroad. Um, hey, if the boss is going to pay for your airfare, why not extend that vacation and stay a little longer in destination? Cruising, believe it or not, cruising has um, has really exploded since COVID. Um, they're selling out. World cruises are selling out. Um, world cruises have itineraries that you can book into 2025 now. Um, people are um, doing longer sailings um, with higher cabin categories. So instead of staying in, you know, a veranda or a balcony, they're moving up to a suite to enjoy it. Um, Silver Seas is a luxury cruise line that had 15% more on the books for 2023 um, than it ended up in the entire year of 2022. Uh, February 2023 was their biggest month booking-wise uh, in the history of the company. Uh, Caribbean cruises are off the books. Atla Alaska itineraries have record-breaking results for 2023. Um, RCI, uh, Royal Caribbean, has had an all-time booking records in their 53-year history, and the momentum's continuing. Uh, you'll see river, people are, you know, gravitating to a river and small ship cruising, even though some river cruise itineraries have a limited season, April to October generally, the Christmas market cruises are, are really um, popular, uh, as well as some um, luxury people are you know, moving from the, the midstream cruise lines like uh, Carnival and, and Holland American 
to some of the more luxury cruise lines. I'm seeing a lot more bike and hike, like active itineraries, like the bike and cruise or hike and cruise um, bookings. Uh, also solo travel. People spent a lot of time alone during t COVID. So they're not as afraid to travel alone anymore. Um, so that's a great, great thing because we're also seeing that some of the operators are either reducing the um, single um, supplement, <coughs> excuse me, the single supplement cost for solo travel or they're um, getting rid of it all together. Um, you're seeing a few more um, operators out there that are solely focusing on solo travel. Um, I've seen an interesting shift from rail travel versus flying. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting over a bit of a cold. So if they're in Europe, um, instead of flying from one destination to the other, they're they're using a lot of the rail tour operator uh, itineraries. Travel advisors versus do your do it yourself um, bookers. There's no contest. Canadians favor using travel advisors more than tra other travelers globally. Canadian travelers typically research a trip two to eight months in advance, and they're also twice as likely to care about creating a travel experience that best fits their expectations over price than do-it-yourself travelers. Some trending destinations that we saw um, during 2023, Italy, um, China, Greece, Portugal, Ireland, I'm gonna add Scotland to that in the UK in general, Iceland, Iceland's still hot, Spain and Vegas. Everybody likes a quick jaunt off to, to Vegas every now and then. Um, top trending sun destinations that they saw the past year, uh, several areas in Florida, Hawaii, Punta Cana, Havana, Cuba, um, a few areas in, in California and Montego Bay. Um, worldwide destinations for 2024, um, Argent, they're seeing um, Argent, on the rise are Argentina, Sweden, again, Greece, Trinidad and Tobago, Tokyo, uh, well, Japan in general, um, Italy, um, Guadalupe, I thought was kind of interesting, and Thailand. Some of the top uh, 10 destinations with the biggest price drop in airfares from Canada over the past year. Um, Puerto Rico down 36%, um, Hotoko, Mexico, 27%, Aruba, 23%, San Diego, 23%, uh, Los Cabos, Mexico, 20%, Phoenix, 17%, Montego Bay, 16%, Algeria, 15%, Orlando, 15%, and Vera Darrow, 15%. So travel now, what you need to know, passport applications. Um, these uh, passports, that situation has seemed to um, worked itself out and people are generally getting their passport in two to three weeks. But I still recommend to apply for a passport six months before your expiry date. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, as soon as they sorted it all out, then they were looking at, you know, the, the employees were looking at um, striking. So um, that's always a good recommendation. PR cards. I have seen a few instances, not my clients, thank goodness, but people who um, are in Canada with um, permanent residence cards. Um, those seem to be taking a little longer. I'm not really sure why, but uh, there was one incident where a colleague um, had a wet destination wedding and one of the uh, Yes, PR card, even though she applied for it three months prior to the departure date, still didn't get it. She had to cancel. Thank goodness she had insurance. Um, foreign countries entry visas. Those are changing. And sometimes we, we, we've run into issues like recently with India, where they refused to issue visas to Canadians and Egypt went through the same thing. So those are things you really need to keep an eye out. Travel requirements in destinations. Those are still changing um, pretty consistently. There was a lot more health and immigration and health um, 
uh, electronic forms that need to be completed before you can even enter the country. Um, vaccinations, you need to know what vaccinations are required in the country and what it, and what local health advisories. And a travel agent will know all that information for you. Again, the electronic health and immigration requirements for the destination that you're going. Staying safe, that just, um, I mean, we still always have to practice safe traveling habits. Um, safe habits when we're traveling, excuse me. Um, for yourself and, and you know, we, your important documents and money that you bring, but also ensuring that you have, um, keep, keep your investment um, safe by purchasing the appropriate insurance and sufficient insurance, and as well as um, some of the programs that are out there for um, travel assurance plans. Um, challenges to Canadians. The biggest challenges I see for 2024 for Canadians traveling is inflation, the cost of living, um, and growing personal debt. Um, if that continues to rise, I think it might be a factor or a challenge for Canadians, um, you know, spending the money on travel versus putting food on the table, paying the rent or, or uh, credit card balances, that sort of thing. Um, we also have to think about the global geopolitical issues right now. Um, not just about safety, but the Middle East conflicts directly are going to increase um, cost of travel, specifically the cost of fuel. So what's coming and what's different? Um, inventory is still selling out, whether it's planes on the seat, um, rooms in a hotel, cabins on a cruise ship. Um, 2023 it was a phenomenal year for um, global travel. So book early and don't be disappointed. Um, Travel isn't, it's it's supply and demand. It's not a commodity that sits on the shelf. Once that day's passed, um, that company's lost their money. So they really want to make sure they sell it um, before that day's passed. So if, if people are booking, the prices are going to go up. Um, if they see it going down, they'll slowly reduce the price, um, the price of the travel. Uh, suppliers are still needing to recoup the money they lost during COVID um, and the cost of supplies, food, fuel, all that stuff has increased and they feel that pressure as well. So they need to offset that increase by obviously, bring, you know, putting it on the consumer. Um, the other increase in prices are airport taxes um, and I said food and other uh, supplies, but local tour um, tourism uh, taxes as well. You'll see a lot more of those. There's some coming in 2024, 2025, like the ATS for uh, the EU, EU is, is what well, was supposed to be already implemented, I think in 2023, but it's set to, to be implemented in 2025. And it's about $7, seven euros, sorry, um, for over 60 visa uh, exempt countries are required to have a travel authorization to enter most European countries. Um, you'll probably see uh, more travel agent service fees. I mean, these, these started about 20 years ago when the airlines decided they didn't want to pay travel agents commissions anymore. But we saw over COVID that we can no longer work for free. Um, Is, is it was difficult during COVID because we're one of the few um, few um, industries that um, commissions are recalled. Um, so that happened and that money was already spent. And then the suppliers came back, okay, your client canceled. We got to take our commission back. So um, you, you're looking at cancellation fees. Agents are going to be... Um, charging cancellation fees if you cancel or um, then they're going to say, you know, well, it's a hundred dollar cancellation fee because I'm going to, I still did the work um, as well as look to book fee or book 
look to book fees, um, booking fees. So, you know, if I did a, a day full of work for you, um, or sorry, it's called book to go fees. I apologize for that. Um, if I did the work for you, then I still deserve to be paid something for doing all that work. Um, technology. Well, technology exploded during COVID and we're going to continue um, and it will continue to do so um, with the lack of human resources uh, and and plus the suppliers uh, want to save money. So they're going to implement more technology to do that. So the Canadian tour and business um, are operating with over 100,000 fewer workers than they were in 2019. Um, passengers are going to be forced to use electro or technology. Um, you've probably been traveling and most destinations you go to, you'll have to do in addition to your online check-in and everything else. Um, there's probably a mandatory health and immigration documents that are going to be required. Um, you're going to see biometrics come into play more, face recognition, QR codes, um, uh, as well as mobile applications. We already see it. We can all, almost do everything on our phones, um, but they're just it's just going to go that way. Um, there's going to be a continued move to contactlessness and touchless travel. Virtual queuing technology limits the need for close contact. Um, the need to improve safety and eliminate the need to uh, the need for employees and customers to touch products, equipment, and surfaces service surfaces. Every industry suddenly realized the importance of touchless system and virtual technology. Of course, it's any device you can operate without needing physical touch. Um, augmented, uh, augmented reality and VR um, are going to be um, used a lot more. They're already used in cruise, uh, cruise muster drills. Um, you'll see, you've already seen the use of chat box. That's gonna, um, and virtual assistants. Um, to help make travel decisions, bookings, um, in again, the QR codes. Um, AI and chat GP is uh, driven technology will continue to evolve aggressively. Um, so why use a chat? Why use a travel agent? Well, we're, uh, we have accreditations, cert certifications, training and knowledge. We're constantly taking courses, some are mandatory, um, just to um, improve and to improve our knowledge and the constant changing of things in the travel industry. I'm connected. I have relationship with hundreds of suppliers, hoteliers, airlines, and cruise lines. Um, then I can get you the answers that you need um, or that I need and make special arrangements and address and solve any issues. Um, I'm part of a large network of agents with different special specialties that I connect can connect with for questions or information. Um, as I said, I'm with the travel agent next door and we have over 1200 travel agents um, within our organization that are very um, supportive and helpful if I have any questions or need any um, suggestions, that sort of thing. I'm a matchmaker. Um, a good travel advisor will qualify their clients in order to offer them the best travel options suited to their personality, travel goals, activity level, and finances. Um, try, people look to advisors to save them time and provide an extra layer of protection if something goes wrong. Um, it's all in details. I'll package your trip. I just won't send you the e-ticket. I'll include all the information that you need to travel um, safely and seamlessly. Uh, personal service. I get to know my clients or prospective clients. I'm not a 1-800 booker, uh, booking taker. Um, referrals are my business. I provide custom itineraries to meet individual needs. I will even provide printed documents and information and deliver them to you directly if that's what you prefer. I have a lot of senior clients that prefer that. Um, I'm your advocate. Should something go wrong, you have a direct contact with me uh, versus online travel agencies. Um, and I'm knowledgeable on how and how the processes and how to get you compensated if it's warranted. Um, I can conduct appointments where you are, and I'm available over and above regular business hours. 
safe and secure. We, I only work with, I generally only work with TECO certified vetted suppliers. Um, when you're with TECO, when uh, a TECO supplier, your monetary investment is secure until you travel and it's mandated through, through TECO that funds are in trust until you travel. Um, insurance, I'll recommend the right and sufficient insurance for you. I have access to all type of travel insurance plans. Um, I use uh, software systems that are highly encrypted and secure and save uh, to save personal and payment information. I'm required to take a mandatory annual PCI compliance training, which is um, the processing of credit cards and that sort of thing. Um, safer than booking online because we know that uh, some computers are a target for crooks and they can steal your details. Um, I've got your back. I have the tools and know exactly what you need to travel to any countries and I'll make sure you have the um, correct travel information documents for you and your companions. And I can be reached after standard business hours. I'm available for you before, during and after you travel. Yes, I have answered the phone at 3 a.m. from clients. Uh, I can save you time. It takes approximately on average eight hours for a consumer to research a simple, all-inclusive trip. Well, I've been in the business a while. Um, I can do it more expediently. Um, I have tools um, to help me do that, you know, to save your time. Your time's valuable. Money, I'm able to get you the bright, best price. Um, I have access to pricing in, in the market at my fingertips. And I also get um, notifications of um, promotions and savings from the suppliers and my business development managers ahead of um, when the consumer gets them. Also, I may know a hidden gem that's cheaper um, than what's the mainly being booked. Um, as I said earlier, I do have close relationship with my supplier business development managers that advise us of early booking bonuses um, or promotions or discounts before they're out to the consumer. Um, as I said, I belong to a national organization um, and a lot of, say for instance, cruise lines, I can get um, inclusions like on onboard credits um, that aren't, um, you're not able to get when you just book as a consumer direct with the cruise line. Um, the big myth is the price is cheaper online. That's false. We get the same price as the online um, travel agencies in Canada. Travel insurance, the dread, dread, dreaded question, why you need it? Uh, from unexpected medical emergencies to canceled flights, even the best laid travel plans can go awry. Travel medical and trip cancellation and trip interruption coverage can help protect you and your family from unforeseen and often costly expenses when you're away. I would rather, and I do always get travel insurance, um, I would rather spend $500 on a travel insurance premium than lose five ten thousand dollars $10,000 by not having it. Um, we know what kinds are available and what kinds suit our clients the best. Um, are there additional perks in the tra travel insurance you're buying? For instance, the travel insurance I sell um, has a flight assist. So um, if you register your flights at least an hour prior to um, the scheduled uh, flight departure time, I always suggest doing it the day before. Um, if it's delayed by three hours or more and you're registered, you get $40 in your bank. If it's delayed by six hours or more or canceled, $140 in your bank account. Um, it's just a little perk included in the travel insurance. Um, the other nice uh, inclusion that we have is a 10-day right to examine. If you're, you know, concerned about the premium price or not sure if you, you know, have other um, coverage with your credit card or, which I don't think is the best coverage for travel, but uh, maybe you have some other partial private insurance. Um, the insurances that I sell have a 10-day right to examine. 
which means if you purchase the insurance, the travel insurance, and you decide within 10 days that you no longer need it or want it, you can contact me and I will have that canceled through the insurance company and they will refund your premium back to your credit card. Um, so that's a little, another good benefit. Purchase it. If you read through it or, or do some more research on your own and you don't need it, then you can just cancel it and get your full premium refunded. Um, work the travel insurance into your overall budget. Um, it's it just, it just what I highly recommend. Uh, read the fine print. Re read your whole policy, really, <laughs> but read the fine print of any travel insurance. Um, purchase your travel ins insurance sooner than later. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, once that once you've booked your travel, um, there's a few reasons for that. Anything can happen the next week to you or a family member or something in the world, the destination you're going to. Um, but another good reason is if you're having a milestone birthday from the time you purchased your trip to the time you traveled, like say you're turning 59, you're, you're 59 when you booked, but you're turning 60 or you'll be 60 when you travel. Well, that's a milestone birthday, especially, you know, uh, with travel insurance, the premiums tend to go up. So if you purchase it at 59, it's still valid when you travel, even though you're 60, but it'll probably be a little cheaper. Um, top up travel insurance, you may, you may already have. So maybe you already belong to an organization like TARP or CARP and they have sudden com coverage or you have some private travel insurance or even a little bit on your credit card. Um, just purchase the top up. You don't have to purchase the sum insured for the whole amount of your travel. Say you have 1500 or 2000 on your credit card or with one of these organizations, then you only need two more thousand top up for me. So that'll save you some money there too. Um, we offer um, an exclusive program through the travel agent next door. It's called CAP, CAP Travel Assistance. It doesn't replace travel insurance. It's just a travel insurance um, plan, basically. Um, you can only get it into 30, 60, and 90 day, and uh, they also have an annual plan. Um, the cheapest one is the uh, $99 Canadian plan. So what it does is um, it, it's um, peace of mind, basically, especially after COVID and all the things that are, that are going geopolitically on in the world today. Um, it, the the travel medical benefits it includes it's medical evacuation um, and a medical transport escort. So if you have travel insurance, yes, you're going to get um, transported home when the, the hospital or doctor says you can leave. But this company will actually send an escort down um, to your destination and escort you home. So you're not doing that on your own if your family members or the traveling companions have already left. Um, it offers medical and dental referrals, medical monitoring, uh, emergency relocation, um, dependent children assistance, training companion assistance. Um, it also offers assistance for natural disasters, pandemic threats, political threats, terrorism, um, um, situations, violent crime, relocation, and crisis consultation in the destination that you're in. And that's all done through the app. So once you have it, you can download the app and then it, it's just a, a wealth of information and support on that app. It's, it's a really good, especially if you're nervous um, about traveling or a destination you're going to, it's a really good um, supplement to travel insurance um, for security reasons for your, <clears throat> excuse me. We also offer, um, you, you've probably seen out there that the travel companies are offering a lot of book now and pay later programs. Um, the one that we offer is what we call ZIP. It's a zero interest program. And um, we, um, it, so it's, it's 
there's no interest involved. It's only available through the travel agent next door. Um, you finance your travel over three, six, or 12 months with 0% interest, and you can defer your payments or pay in equal monthly payments and simply um, pay a one-time finance service fee. So one-time low financing fee. So for instance, in the chart down here, if you get approved to borrow one to $4,999, if you defer that payment over three months, it's going to cost you a flat amount of $69.99. If you defer it over a term of six months, it's $99.99. And you defer that amount over 12 months, it's $169.99. So that's a lot less than 28% interest on a, a credit card. And the thing is, a lot of people um, who use these programs, like the Book Now, Pay Later, um, programs aren't because they can't afford travel. It's because they're people who have their money in investments and they want to keep them in those investments for as long as possible. So why not use this when it's cheaper, uh, making more money on my investments? Um, the other um, reason people tend to use this is to upgrade their travel experience. So instead of getting, I don't know, um, a balcony or a veranda, they 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 book their cruise in a suite because they want to have the the you know the most more luxurious experience um, than they had in the past. Okay, so some tips to save money and keep you safe. As I said earlier, book and plan earlier. Uh, early, sorry. Feel free to do your own research. Not only the does this get you familiar with the destinations that you want to go to. Um, but it also will enlighten you of um, how much that destination might cost. Um, and believe it or not, travel agents love when you do your own research. Um, consider packaged itineraries versus, versus customized or curated personalized um, trips. Suppliers buy in bulk, like anything. Um, if it's already created, it's going to save you um, and packaged, it's going to save you money. Consider staying longer. Um, consider traveling in shoulder seasons versus high season. Can you travel midweek versus weekends or Fridays and Mondays? It's weekends and Fridays or Mondays. The price does tend to go be more more than midweek. Um, can you mix business trip with leisure? You know, if the boss, like I said earlier, if the boss is paying, put another, put, you know, add a week's vacation to that. At least you're not paying for the airfare. Um, purchase check bags before arriving at the airport. Um, you may already know or have seen that some airlines um, charge more when you do this at the airport. Specifically, there's a couple domestic one, or ones in Canada that will charge $10 more if you wait to check your bags um, at the airport if it's not included in, in your um, uh, flights or package have sufficient travel insurance. Like I said, I'd rather lose, uh, spend $500 on travel insurance premium than lose thousands of dollars by not having sufficient insurance. Uh, register with the Canadians Traveling Abroad website. It's a free service that allows the government of Canada to notify you in case of emergency abroad or a personal emergency at home. Uh, it also enables uh, you to receive important information uh, before or during your trip of natural disaster or civil unrest in the, the destination that you're you're in or going to. Um, staying connected. I'm not going to go into this a lot because we had some great information with the other presenters about SIM cards and that sort of thing, but they are definitely cheaper than purchasing a plan from our mobile suppliers that we have here in Canada for the most part. Um, and of course, use WhatsApp if you don't need data. It's a free service and a lot of people are familiar with it and are on it, connected to it. Um, can you pay in installments? Um, if you have enough time between your deposit when you originally booked your, your travel and final payment, um, you know, say it's six thousand dollars you paid your your 250 deposit but you're not going for six months can you pay a thousand 
or 2000 every couple months. Um, that's another way to, um, you know, alleviate all of a sudden having $5,600 now due in a week and then have to throw that on a credit card at the last minute or, or whatever. Um, and look at the buy now, pay later programs like the zip program I previously chatted about. Um, sometimes a good travel credit card can make your vacation more convenient and secure and comfortable. Sometimes they have added benefits as well as a airport lounge. Um, and like uh, Eric said, set up a travel fund. Um, the TFSA is a good one and the tax, re tax refunds I really thought was uh, a good tip. Uh, so put a percent percentage away for travel only. Um, and again, use a travel agent. <laughs> um, so basically, of all the books in the world, the best stories are found between the pages of your passport. That's all the information I have. Um, That's good. Any questions for me? Mm, that was that was thorough, Diane. You covered a lot of ground. So sure. I know we... Uh, uh, I see Linda's on, and I hope, Linda, you found a few extra tips for the time you spent here. Um, some of the information was uh, was repeated on the first session, but this uh, travel section was very thorough, very different. And I uh, apologize for my throat. Like As I said, I'm getting over a cold. Yeah, no, well, that's, uh, that's understandable. Not a problem. So um, to uh, Peter and Linda, thank you again for attending to the a panel, uh, uh, Eric and Pear and Angel, Diane. Uh, Eric, uh, Pear, did you just want to uh, uh, detail where we're going to keep this information or how people can access this information? Sure. So a couple of things. First off, I wanted to point out, uh, Diane's helped, uh, my, uh, not only she's a, a friend of my wife's, but she also has helped the um, my daughter's school with uh, with travel as well and uh, so when their flights were delayed on a school trip they were taking to nova scotia mm -hmm. um, all the parents we got some some nice little uh, e-transfers very quickly uh, when the when the flights were delayed and so um it's it's a really great thing and and, and to do that is, is is key and so that that extra bonus that diane has is, is excellent uh, so yeah. highly highly recommend it um uh, so this this is a, a recorded webinar uh, anybody that attended or signed up for it will be receiving a, a recording by email within about a week. And it will also be hosted on our website and on our YouTube channel. So lots of ways to see this excellent information, come back and review it. And uh, that's all magically done somehow by Leah. And uh, she does a great job of organizing these webinars. Okay, and, so what? Just curious. sharing them. So thank you, Leah. What that. is our YouTube channel called or how do they find it? So you're going to go on YouTube and you're going to search for WWH Financial Group, ah, and, uh, and you'll you'll find it there. Okay. Uh, I'll also put it in the comments or chat. And, uh, I see yeah. a request for Diane's uh, QR code. I'll just bring that up in a moment, Peter. Well, Diana, I'm glad you're you're on the other end of the phone at two o'clock in the morning when I'm stuck in the airport <laughs> and I don't know who to call. I, I wouldn't I have want to do done it. that. <laughs> so I, I don't know how you guys do it, but I know it, it's been really helpful when we've had uh, issues to overcome, uh, to have someone there who knew who, who knew how to contact the airlines or were able to get through. Think of the hours that we've waited online to try to get served and how uh, how useful it is to have a travel uh, expert uh, manage those things for us. So thank you on behalf of the team. And thanks, thanks Angel. Enjoy your travels in uh in uh, Europe, and uh, hope, hopefully we'll do something else uh, that's of interest to everybody. Well, let's all get out traveling and enjoy life. Yeah. Sounds Happy like travels, fun. everyone. Bye-bye. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank okay. you. Happy holidays. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dan. I'll send you the information, uh, what we're looking for, uh, by email. Perfect. I look forward okay. to it. Okay. Bye-bye.